Hiya folks, uh, Jack Frost here and this is going to get you ready for your last uh, test in statistics uh, except for a final. So uh, this is on chapters 12 and a little bit on 13 and one section on 15, the ANOVA. So, okay, so conditions for um, a confidence interval for a population proportion uh, uh, P, uh, the, uh, your mean has to equal your P. Uh, which is your, your proportion. The sample proportion, which is your p hat, is an unbi unbiased estimator of your uh, population proportion right there. Okay, uh, let's see. Population has to be at le least 10 times as large as the sample, and the sample size has to be large enough to support uh, uh, whatever your sample size is times p. Uh, has to be greater than or equal to 10, and then the sample size times 1 minus p also has to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, and if that works out, then your confidence interval becomes uh, your your p hat plus or minus um, your z star from your confidence interval level, and then uh, square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat divided by n. Okay, let's try one of these here. So Gallup poll asks a sample of 1,785 adults, did you attend church in the last seven days? Of the respondents, 750 said yes. Suppose this was an SRS of all adults. Give a 99% confidence interval. Uh, for the proportion of adults who attended church uh, during the week before the poll. So let's go ahead and check the conditions here. Okay, so first I had to find P hat, you guys. P hat is uh, how many who said they did out of how many uh, that were polled. So it's 0.4202. And then so you do your sample size times 0.4202 and then times 1 minus 0.4202. And then uh, both of those are definitely greater than 10 right there. Okay, and there's definitely at least 10 times as many um, uh, adults in, in our population. So we're safe to go ahead and proceed, you guys. So here's my formula, p hat plus or minus the z star square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat divided by n. Okay, so 99% so confidence interval, my z star is 2.576, there's my p hat. And then just plug it all in, and I get to that, and then that's what I get right there, okay? And you could do this in your graphing calculator also. If you go to uh, Stat, Tests, and then uh, A gives uh, the one proportion Z interval, so you put, so scroll down to A, and then uh, plug in uh, X equals 750, N equals 1785, C level 99, and then calculate, and we get pretty close to what we did by hand right there, okay? All right. So does this uh, does this result provide good evidence that less than half of the population attended church? Well, if it since this is my 99% confidence interval, that's less than half, 50% somewhere above that confidence interval. So since the 99% interval is less than the 50%, then absolutely yes, it provides good evidence that less than half the population attended church last week. Okay, uh, let's see what else do I have. So how large a sample would be required to obtain a margin of error? Uh, 0.01 in a 99% confidence interval. And we're going to use the conservative guess. Whoops, I never closed parentheses on that. Uh, P star equaling um, uh, 0.5. Okay, so here we go. Um, uh, so here's my formula right here. Z star, this is my margin of error part. Uh, square root plus uh, P hat, 1 minus P hat divided by N. And we're going to let that let be less than or equal to the margin of error. Okay, my 99% confidence interval, so 2.576 goes here. 0.5 goes here, 0.5 goes here, and we're solving for n. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by 2.576. You can solve this in all kinds of different ways, you guys. Anyways, I get n is greater than 16,576 with some change, so always round up, you guys, 16,577. All right, uh, the pesticide, oh boy, let's see, di, di, that word, let's see, di, diazinon, something like that, <laughs> sorry is in a common use of um, uh, to treat infestation of the German cockroach. A study investigated the persistence of this pesticide on various types of surfaces. Researchers applied 0.5% uh, emulsion of this uh, of this pesticide <laughs> to the glass to glass and plasterboard. So there are two surfaces. So after 14 days they placed 18 cockroaches on each of these surfaces and recorded the number uh, that died within 48 hours. So on the glass, nine cockroaches died, while on the plasterboard, 13 cockroaches died. Okay, so let's construct and interpret 95% confidence interval for the difference in the two population proportions. Okay, so step one, let's go ahead and uh, uh, state um, uh, my, my, my P's. So uh, P1 is going to be the proportion of cockroaches who died on the glass, and P2 is going to be on the plasterboard. Okay, 
And then we're doing a confidence interval, so my p hats are going to be uh, 0.5 and 0.72. And so step two, we must assume uh, that cockroaches were randomly assigned to the two surfaces. So uh, I guess we're going to have to. So uh, the hypothetical population of cockroaches on glass and plasterboard should certainly include at least 180 uh, cockroaches each, so 10 times as many right there. All right, so we must, um, uh, let's see, uh, and we have to check uh, to make sure that these values are all greater than or equal to 5, and they are, so the count of successes and failures are at least, uh, all at least 5, I think this was like 5.05, .05, something like that. All righty, so, um, so here's my confidence interval right here, so p hat minus uh, the other p hat, uh, plus or minus z star times this, the standard error, and the standard error is this formula right here, okay? And then here's my P hats right there, so you can plug them in. All right, when you plug them in, or you can go ahead and use your graphing calculator. I have it bigger here. So in your graphing calculator, you do test, you scroll, um, you do stat test, scroll down to two proportion Z interval, which in my calculator is B, and then plug in X1 is 9, N1 is 18, X2 is 13, N2 is um, uh, N2 is uh, 18, and I think we were doing a uh, was it a 95%? Okay, so then plug in your 95% and calculate, and uh, and so we get that interval right there. And so then it said interpret this, you guys. So I'm going to say that we're 95% confident that the difference in the proportion of cockroaches who who die either on glass or plasterboard is between uh, a negative 0.53 and a positive 0 0.09. Okay. All right, what else do I have for you here? Okay, so an experiment in chicken breeding results in offsprings that have very curly, slightly curly, or normal feathers. If this result of a single gene, if this is the result of a single gene system, then the proportions, and that's uh, the key word right here, then the proportions, okay, so this tells me it's going to be a chi-square because it's proportions. If it was means, it would be an ANOVA test uh, of offspring in the three... Uh, uh, phenotypes uh, should be 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0.25 respectively. Okay, so 0.25 would be for the uh, very curly, 0 0.50 would be the slightly curly, and then um, uh, 0.25 would be the normal. So in, in one such experiment, uh, 93 chickens were born. So to get the expected value, you guys, for, uh, we're going to go 93 times 0 0.25, 93 times 0 0.50, 93 times that. Okay, but the observed ones were uh, 20 had normal feathers, 50 had slightly curly feathers, and 23 had very curly feathers. So carry out a test and determine whether the, the genetic model seems to hold in the setting right here. Okay, so step one, um, I know hypotheses is that there's no change. So uh, the proportion of very curly still is 25%. The proportion of um, slightly curly is 50%. The proportion of normal feathers is 25%. So you know your alternative hypothesis is at least one of these proportions is incorrect, okay? So we must consider these offspring as an SRS from all the possible offsprings that can be produced uh, if we're going to do any kind of calculations on this, okay? So assuming the null hypothesis is true, our expected counts are, this is what I was talking about, 93 times the times each proportion right there so we get these numbers these are my expected numbers right here okay so since all expected counts are at least five we're safe to use the chi-squared goodness of fit test uh, okay so there's my chi-squared right there so it's the sum of all the observed counts minus the expected count squared divided by the observed counts okay so there's only three of them so you can do all of them if you wanted or we can do this in the calculator of course so list one put in uh, the observed list two put in the expected and then uh, and then in a clear screen do list one minus list two squared divided by list two and then store that in list three and then when you do that then you're gonna do the sum you guys so the sum is located under list and list is a second function stat excuse me and then number five, I believe. And then uh, if you enter that, uh, it'll sum all those up and list three. So you get uh, 0.72. All right. And then so to get your P value, uh, go to table E in the back of the book. And so since there was uh, three uh, uh, values, three, if the N was three, the degrees of freedom is N minus one. So it's two. So if you go to degrees of freedom of 2 and you're looking for a chi-square to 0.72, that's not, it wasn't even in my book, you guys. It's off the book, which meant, told me it was to the left of 0.25, which means it's much bigger than uh, 25%. But if you do it in your graphing calculator, 
uh, your chi squared is under the distribution, second function uh, vars, and down to number seven on mine, and you get your chi squared, and so you plug in your answer for this right here, or you can plug in 0.72, comma. We plug in a thousand because it's uh, we're thinking of all the numbers to the right of 0.72. So if you go way to the right, that'll give me most of the curve to the right right there. That's why it's a thousand. You can put in ten thousand or whatever. 500 would work. So anyways, a large number right here. And then 2 for degrees of freedom. And then you hit enter and you get 0.698. That's my p-value, 0.698. So since the p-value is large, we have no reason to double, I'm sorry, to doubt uh, the proposed uh, genetic uh, model. Okay. All right, so um, your ANOVA, we just covered that, you guys, if you're in my class. And so if you take a look um, on section 15.2, uh, you'll see my notes in there, and if you want to see a great uh, lesson that one of my past students did, Alex. Uh, Alex did a great job, and Kyle, and uh, Natalie, was it? I think uh, they did a great job on that video. So, anyways, uh, and if you're in my class, I'm going to have you guys just study, not for your final for this test, but for your final also. But let's just study for the test on this one. Okay, take care, you guys.